In this video, we'll see an example of using integration by parts with a definite integral instead of just an indefinite integral. Um, this example also allows us to review one of our applications, which is finding the volume um, of a solid of revolution. So here, we're interested in finding the volume of a solid that's generated when the region bounded by f of x equals x log x, and the x-axis on the interval from 1 to e squared is revolved about the x-axis. And I've um, just included the sketch here. Um, you wouldn't be expected to sketch x log x by hand. So we have this sketch um, in front of us. And we want to think about what method we might want to use um, in order to set up our volume for revolving about the x-axis. So notice that I'm given this function in terms of x, and I really would not want to try to solve for um, x in terms of y. So I definitely want to integrate with respect to x. So if I'm going about the x-axis, that means I want to be able to slice um, vertically here. So I'll have a little delta x. So I want to use the disk method so that I can integrate with respect to um, x when I'm doing this um, revolution about the x-axis. So let's go ahead and set up our volume. So our volume will be an integral from 1 to e squared. Um, I see that when I take this region and rotate it around the x-axis, I would have um, disk cross-sections since my region is totally touching the x-axis. So um, we would have just a single radius that would be the height of that rectangle. So we see that that would be um, just x log x minus 0. So I'm going to have pi times x log x squared dx. Okay, So I can take out that constant of pi. So I have pi times an integral from 1 to e squared of x squared and then this log x squared dx. Okay. So what do we notice about this um, integral? So we do have a definite integral, but I do have um, what I'm looking for when uh, integration by parts is going to be helpful. I do have a product of these two different kinds of functions. I've got this power function here, which is algebraic, and I do have this log function being raised to a power. So I've got a log type function. Got our ilate guideline again, which is our guideline for prioritizing u. This says if I have some sort of log component, I want to prioritize that log component for u over the algebraic component. So when I'm going to set up my u and my dv here, I want to take all of this log stuff and make that my u. So I'm going to let u be equal to log x squared. And my dv will be all the remaining stuff in the integral. So it'll be x squared dx. Okay. <coughs> so we know that um, putting x squared in for u, well, that would get simpler when I do the derivative, but I don't want to put log x squared as my dv because I don't want to integrate log x squared by itself. Integrating the log x squared by itself would require integration by parts. We don't want to put something in for dv that would require integration by parts. So we're going to go ahead now and find our du and our v. So when du is log x quantity squared, our du will involve using the chain rule because I do have something squared here. So this will be 2 times log x and then times the derivative of log x. So that's 1 over x dx. And our v will be x cubed over 3, the integral of x squared. Okay, So let's see how this um, goes into our integration by parts formula. Again, remember that our integral of u dv is uv minus the integral of v du. I find it helps to just keep writing that down. Um, remind yourself of how this formula works. So this is going to be equal to pi. And then we will have our uv, which will be um, x cubed over 3 times log x squared. And that will be evaluated from 1 to e squared. And so we just have this extra evaluation piece that's now going to go into our um, definite integral with integration by parts. And then this is minus the integral of v du. So I'm going to have x cubed over 3, and then the 2 log x um, over x dx. And again, this is from 1 to e squared. 
Okay, so we look to do a little bit of um, simplifying on this. Let's see, I have an x down here and an x cubed up here, so that'll simplify to an x squared, and I also have this 2 thirds constant that we can bring out in front. So let's see what we get. So we're going to have this pi times our um, x cubed over 3 log x squared from 1 to e squared minus this 2 thirds integral from 1 to e squared of x squared log x dx. Okay, so this is our new um, integral piece after doing one application of integration by parts. Notice that it has become simpler. We still do have an x squared term like we had to start with, but now I have a single log x instead of a log x raised to a power. So it has become a little bit better. Notice that before when we had um, examples like um, x squared times sine um, of x, something similar to that in an earlier example, we did u was equal to x squared and we needed a second integration by parts where u was equal to x. So the power of the part that we put into u um, got reduced. Here we're putting this log x squared um, part into u and that part is being reduced in our new integral. But notice we do still have something that requires integration by parts. So we gotta do integration by parts again. Again, I've got an algebraic thing and a log type thing. So let's see. What we want to let u now be log x and dv be x squared dx. So our du will be 1 over dx and our v will be x cubed over 3. Okay, so we're going to have pi here times our x cubed over 3 um, of our log x squared from 1 to e squared, just continuing to write that same part down, um, minus 2 thirds. And notice because I do have this minus 2 thirds out in front, and I'm going to be replacing this integral with the integration by parts formula here, I want to make sure I use parentheses because that negative 2 thirds constant would have to get distributed through. So notice I'll have for my uv, we'll have x cubed over 3 log x minus our integral of v, which is x cubed over 3, and du, which is 1 over x dx. And this does have these bounds from 1 to e squared on it. But notice that this new integral part that we got doesn't have a log part in it anymore. It's just going to simplify to an integral of x squared. Okay. So let's write down what we have here. And if we want, we can go ahead and try to plug in some of the, the bounds um, to simplify some of our work for us. So if we plug in um, e squared into x cubed here, that'll become um, e to the sixth. So I'll have um, e to the sixth over three, and then I'll have this times log of um, e squared squared. Notice that log of e squared would be 2. So I'd have 2 squared or times 4 here. Minus what happens when I plug in 1. But notice that log of 1 is 0, so I'll end up with minus 0 for that part. Okay, so now I just have to deal with all of this stuff. So this is minus 2 thirds. Again, we can do our limits here from 1 to e squared. So I'll have e to the 6 over 3 times log of e squared, which would be times 2. Again, I'll end up with minus um, 0 since log of 1 is 0. Okay, so the integral that we're left with that we haven't evaluated yet is this integral from 1 to e squared. I can pull out the 1 third there. And I have, let's see, just x squared dx. So this x cubed and over x is becoming x squared. So notice that this is getting um, simpler here. We just have a bit of arithmetic going on. So I have pi times 4 e to the 6 over 3. And we can go ahead and multiply that minus 2 thirds through. So we have minus 4 e to the 6 over 9. Notice that this minus 2 thirds here, let me use another color to highlight what we're doing. 
this minus two thirds times this minus one third is gonna give us a positive um, two ninths. So I'll have plus um, two ninths out of that. And then I have my integral that I'm trying to do from one to e squared of x squared. So that will be x cubed over three evaluated from one to e squared. Okay, so we have pi, we have this four e to the sixth over three minus four e to the sixth over nine. Okay, we're gonna have plus two ninths. We're gonna plug in this e squared, so we'll have e to the sixth over three minus one third. Okay, so I'm not gonna spend the time in the video to go through the simplification here, but with just a little bit of simplification, if you want to see what that simplified answer is, it's still not um, super simple, it's still a little complicated looking, but we will have um, 26 e to the sixth all over 27 minus 2 over 27. Okay. Um, now, if this was a free response problem, you could leave it in this, this unsimplified form. Um, we wouldn't give you something this long on a multiple choice, but in situations of multiple choice, sometimes you do have to do, get, do some uh, simplification to, to get it to match. Um, but if this were a homework problem, you could uh, leave it you know, unsimplified here unless you were trying to check your answer. So we see how we were able to use two um, applications of integration by parts here. Um, the definite integral part just adds a little extra step of doing the arithmetic of plugging in those those limits and we see that when we have um, some kind of power of x and a log part we're always going to want to put that log part in for our u.